Hi crafters, it's Cynthia. Uh, today I decided that I was going to shoot my very first floss tube video. So I'm very excited to be trying this out. And um, as you know, I mostly do paper crafting videos and card making videos. And I'm on the Cat Scrappiness Design Team. So most of my videos have a specific theme. But um, I've only been doing uh, paper crafting for about, I'm going to say maybe five years. And I have been cross-stitching for close to 30 years. So actually it's been more than 30 years, but we won't go into the math. <laughs> Suffice it to say that cross-stitching has been an almost lifelong passion. And um, as I'm watching all these other floss tubers, I realized that I have quite a bit of things to share as well. So um, I was looking through, I mean, I was trying to figure out, first of all, what my very first floss tube video was going to be like. And I have, you know, a lot of things to show, a lot of things to share. So I think this video is just going to be more of an introduction and I can talk a little bit about uh, what I do and certain tools that I use. So you're also gonna hear my cat again. Uh, our largest cat, Owen, is very, very vocal and there is no way to shut him up. <laughs> so if you hear a cat, it's him and he's just, see, there he is. He just wants to know Yes, he just wants to know what I'm doing and who I'm talking to. <laughs> so anyway, um, I think I just, I'm just i just going to go ahead and dive right in. Um, currently, I guess you could call this a work in progress or a whip. I am actually doing my very first Chatelaine. So I have owned this pattern, which is the water garden pattern. I believe it's Chatelaine pattern number 22, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I've had this pattern for a good 10 years or more, and it's just been sitting. Oh, Owen is going to walk through. Well, that's even better. Hello. Anyway, um, I've had this pattern um, on hand, and it was just sitting in a box being ignored, unfortunately, because I was too intimidated to really ever do it. And I uh, really thought about it and I was poking around and looking at other people, uh, stitching chatelaines and their progress pictures. And yes, and um, I just, oh gosh, he's walking under the camera tripod. Okay. Oh, there's his tail. <laughs> Owen, what are you doing? Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, but I was watching all of that and looking at progress photos and I just was like, you know, it's just a needle and thread and some fabric. You know, it's something I've been doing for 30 plus years. I think I could probably manage it. So um, sure enough, I got out the patterns and um, one of the reasons I did this, not only do I like this pattern very much, but as far as the expense with the hand dyed threads and the silks and the uh, crystals and the, what are they called, um, Delica beads? Anyway, this one doesn't call for a tremendous fortune in specialty projects or products, excuse me. Um, it's quite a bit of DMC floss, which I'm very used to, and I have plenty of it on hand, and it's very readily available. I have multiple craft stores in my city, and it's very easy for me to pick up colors. So anyway, that's one of the reasons I decided to have this be my first one, because um, it's a mandala style, which I really like. Oh, there's that tail again. Oh, dear. And um, it wasn't going to be too expensive to kit it up and get it together. So I actually ordered um, the specialty fibers and bead pack 
from European Cross Stitch. And um, I ordered that on December 26th, and today is January 18th, and I still don't have it, so I have no idea when that's coming. But at least in the meantime, I am doing all of the um, full cross DMC stitches first, which is what the pattern recommends anyway. So um, at least I'm getting something done. And then what I did is I just actually had this little box on hand. Believe me, I have a lot of these little boxes. So I just went ahead and put all of my DMC flosses on bobbins. And I just put the number, of course, here on the side in pen. And so I've got all of my flosses in here. Um, I have my little cube of Thread Heaven, and I use my Thread Heaven religiously on all my flosses. So I do not have an issue with tangling and knotting when I use this. So I just got in the habit of using it. And I picked up some extra needles. These are just from Boy, they're size 24. And it actually says counted cross stitch needles. So how perfect is that? And then um, some of the skeins called for two or three total. So I just have extras tucked in here. So that's all that's in here now. And like I said, the specialty silks and the beads and crystals are coming. And then I've had these little clippers for many, many years. And I keep them in a special little spot so I don't lose them. I don't let anyone else use them. And if I catch them with it, I definitely take it back. <laughs> And there may be some yelling. I don't know. I won't admit it, but you can you can fill in that blank. <laughs> so anyway, um, I am stitching this on a piece of, I think it's Jobelin maybe? Yeah, Jobelin Even Weave. And it's in the lamb's wool color, which I really like because it's just a nice, warm, neutral color. And this one is 32 count. Uh, which is nice and big enough but I thought size 28 count would be a little large because I'm doing this two over two and um, obviously if I did it in 28 it would be pretty big so I have it on a Q snap frame and this is just the 11 inch bars and this is a really really nice um, I have plenty of hoops and I use my hoops but um, for something like this especially, I really wanted to use my Q-snaps. And then I don't have a needle minder, but I do have little magnets. So I went ahead and just put some magnets here. And I took my needle off because I knew I'd be handling this for the video. So that's why you don't see that there. And yeah, you can see that um, I've obviously gotten pretty far with this. I started this oh goodness, in late December. So I, I've been keeping track and I've stitched for 15 days worth of stitching. And of course the timing varied um, at least two hours every day. So there's at least 30 hours into this if, and I know it's much more than that. But anyway, um, I just literally started from the center and then just started working out concentrically. So I did, you know, the inner blue first and then the outer blue and then these colors along this edge and then these little four pieces and then I did this uh, more geometric framework here and now I'm starting to fill in with these little areas of greenery which will repeat here here and here um, and then that'll pretty much take care of the whole center section and then I can move into these corners and then um, these spots here, there's four on each side. Those are going to have crystals. There's going to be five crystals here in the center. And I think some more, maybe one more crystal in each of these, plus a whole bunch of beads. So whenever you see little openings, and I'm going to try to lift this a little closer, but all those little openings um, are going to be beaded when it's time to do that. And... 
some of it like here behind the greenery is just going to be open fabric. Um, but again, because of this pretty warm color, um, it's going to look really nice and it isn't just stark white. And um, I am a big time fan of hand dyed fabrics and I really like the, the ones that are heavily modeled and have a bunch of different colors. But um, Martina, the designer of Chatelaine Patterns, has uh, kind of cautioned you against using a really busy and bold fabric because it really is going to distract your eye from the intric intricacy of the pattern. So I decided that I would just use a solid color that is going to be complementary but not distracting. So anyway, that is my current whip. And I have others, but like I said, um, I didn't want to overload this first video with too much, so I'm not going to do it. And one other little thing, well not little thing, but <laughs> one thing I was going to mention is that I like to use my iPad um, for keeping track of certain things and for uh, using with my patterns. And if you go to the Chatelaine website, um, all of the patterns are offered as PDF files. And as far as I could see on the website, you can't even get a paper pattern shipped to you. Um, if you buy a Chatelaine from a different website, um, like, I don't know who offers them, like maybe ABC Stitch or um, everything cross stitch or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> there's, believe me, there's a lot of online cross stitch stores. But if you purchase a Chatelaine from a store like that, then you're going to get the paper copy. But if you go right to chatelaine.de, I think it's .de.com or something, uh, because it's in Germany. But um, if you order it from there, you're going to get a PDF. And there's actually a benefit to having the PDF file, and I wish I actually had it, but since I already have the pattern in paper, I really didn't want to spend another $40 just to get the PDF file. So, you know, for future Chatelaines, I probably will just buy the PDF pattern and call it good. So let me hold on just a sec. And I have a little cross stitch. Sorry, I know this is super awkward. I'm like I said, I've got my camera on the tripod, so I'm trying to work around it. Anyway, so I have multiple um, apps here, and um, I like the Good Reader app. It just it's easy to use, and I just enjoy it. So this is the very center page of my Chatelaine pattern. And of course, like I said, I started in the center. So, you know, that's why it's all colored now because as I work the stitch, I, you know, cross it off in purple. But anyway, um, you can see all these openings here are where all the beads are gonna go and the crystals. And then here's the pattern for that greenery I mentioned. And then here's some specialty stitches, which will be worked in uh, the silks when I get them. But anyway, um, I just converted, I scanned the paper file into my computer and then converted the file over to PDF format so that I could um, use the pattern with the good reader. So even though I just have a paper pattern and not the official PDF files, I was able to convert so that I can use them. And um, that's just the way I do it and I enjoy it. So there you go. I, this is not gonna become a tutorial for how to use good reader. <laughs> uh, there's also the easy PDF reader. And this one's nice, but um, you know, I don't know how to use it very well and there's you know some differences that I haven't figured out so I won't even go in there 
and the cross stitch markup um, works in conjunction with my Mac stitch software and again that's pretty new and I'm not going to go into it here and then this cross stitch um, it's just X stitch and this is another app and I don't know if it was free or if it was just a few dollars I never buy expensive apps so all of mine are either free or <laughs> almost free but anyway this is just kind of like a little uh, inventory tool for you to use so I have currently I've mostly just put in the charts and kits that I own but um, let me see I'm gonna go into the journal and see I have my started and I've got two and here is the water garden and so I just have a picture here of what it's going to look like I have the title designed by Chatelaine it says oh look I started it on the 30th of December and then I talked about it stitched on 32 count Lambswool Jobelin which I just had in my stash and then in the project notes I'm writing down the days and the time that I've worked so that when the whole thing's done I can say I stitched it in blank number of days and it took me blank number of hours so that's kind of the idea there and then for the inventory um, I haven't bothered to enter all the fabrics I have or really much of the threads but under the charts and kits um, it's going to load and there's a whole list of all the different designers that I have and then within them um, so here's the silver lining and I have a whole bunch of the, those beautiful flowers and so I just again took the title um, the stitch count and then I just made a notation that it's all done in DMC so just you know this is just a little way for me to kind of keep track of what I have so there you go. So I think that's going to go ahead and be it for my very first floss tube. Um, I don't really have like a format for these videos in mind. Obviously as time goes on I'm hoping that I can kind of eventually morph them into a more organized <laughs> video but you know that's okay I'm I'm doing this for fun and I know the floss tube community has a whole bunch of really great people and um, I'm pretty sure that you guys are gonna be kind and flexible <laughs> so um, yeah I think that covers it pretty much for the first video like I said um, Cross stitching has been almost a lifelong passion of mine. So I'm going to certainly be doing this for many, many years to come. My stash is gigantic and I don't really think I'm going to live long enough to actually stitch everything that I have, but I'm happy to know that it's out there and available. And of course, I'm always shopping for more. <laughs> So that I can't, I can't justify, but it's just the way it is. So anyway, thank you guys so much for sitting through this video with me. I hope you're looking forward to seeing more of these from me. Um, I will keep you informed on the progress of my Chatelaine. And um, when I get my kit, finally, I am definitely going to do a little kit unboxing with you guys because I'm so excited to see how beautiful that's going to be. So you guys go ahead and enjoy stitching if that's what you like to do. Um, if you have not yet ventured into cross stitching, uh, I would like to encourage you to give it a shot. Um, most, in fact, well, I don't want to say every craft store, but many, many, many craft stores will have kits. Just real simple, small kits that you can purchase for just a few dollars and get, you know, kind of dip your toe into the cross stitching waters by picking up a kit. So that's how I started when I was a little girl and it's very easy. The kits are complete with everything you need and um, you just may spark a lifelong passion of your own. <laughs> 
So you guys take care of yourselves. Thank you again for joining me. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.